and the getting to know each other phase, it is even more crucial for you to operate in your femininity. Because if you operate primarily in your masculine energy during that phase, you will continue to operate in your masculinity throughout the duration of the relationship, which can be frustrating in the long term. Hello ladies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ayani Me, and in today's video we're talking about 10 micro tips that will help you be more feminine when you are dating or in a relationship. And yes, I use the word micro because oftentimes we are so focused on the big things, thinking those are the only things that make a difference, forgetting that the small things do make a difference too. And with that in mind, let's jump into tip number one. Now the first tip is something that we hear very often but it begs repeating and that is for you to allow the man pursue you being in your feminine energy means you understand how important it is for a wholesome quality man to operate in his masculinity the reason why this is important is because he enjoys it so when you switch roles and you start pursuing him you take away a process that he actually enjoys you instantly kill the attraction and you unknowingly try to push him out of operating in his true essence as a masculine man. Haven't you heard of the phrase, the thrill of the hunt? Oh yes, that phrase explains it all. It is a thrilling experience for him. So don't take that away. If you're always the first to initiate communication, you're always in charge of organizing dates or activities for both of you, or even go as far as paying for these things so that you can entice him to spend more time with you, you have not just stepped into your masculinity, you are actively doing the chasing. Okay, and at that point, you are doing too much. And apart from all of that, how will you know if he is intentional with you when you don't lean back and observe how he intends to handle the attraction between the both of you? If you are in the getting to know each other phase, it is even more crucial for you to operate in your femininity. Because if you operate primarily in your masculine energy during that phase, you will continue to operate in your masculinity throughout the duration of the relationship. He will come to expect you to plan dates, initiate communication, and essentially pursue him, which can be frustrating in the long term. So allow him pursue you in every sense of the word so that that dynamic continues into a committed or exclusive relationship. Now number two, and that is for you to let go of the need to control everything about your relationship. This can show up in very subtle but very destructive ways. You could be trying to control the pace of the relationship and that is where women often start having that conversation of, so what are we? What are we doing? When are we getting married? I'm tired of this relationship. You know that? One thing I've come to understand about the need to control a relationship is that it comes from fear. The fear that if you do not initiate the what are we conversation, he's not going to and you will lose him. The fear that if you don't call him, he's not going to call you and you will lose him. The fear that if you don't step in and keep planning dates, he's not going to, so you will lose him. The fear that if you don't approach him first, he will not approach you and you will miss the opportunity of getting to know him. Ladies, it is ultimately the fear of losing a man. And if you are to completely let go of the need to control a relationship, you first have to let go of the fear of losing a man and instead adopt the healthy mindset that any man who likes you, sees your value and wants to be with you, will do everything he needs to do to make that happen. It is as simple as that. Besides, you shouldn't want a man who doesn't want you. Okay, ladies, we have seen men bend over backwards and go the extra mile to be with a woman. So if he's not doing what he should be doing, he's not that into you and that's fine. Your response should not be to step into your masculinity and take control of the relationship. Oh no, your response should be to lean back and let it play out. And if it starts playing out in a direction where you know this is not going to work out, you start dating other men. It's as simple as that. Besides, I have a video on 10 reasons you should be dating multiple men at the same time before committing to an exclusive relationship. I'll leave a card right here for you to watch that video after this one. Now number three and this is for you to continue taking 
care of your appearance and in essence yourself. As women, we have this tendency to take care of ourselves and look our best when we are single because we are hoping to attract a man's attention. Then immediately after that happens, ooh, we let ourselves go and refuse to put in as much effort, forgetting that men are very visual beings and he first noticed something about your appearance before your personality drew him into a relationship with you. Some women let themselves go so badly that they gain a ton of weight, don't care about their hair, their nails, their self-care, and this usually spells trouble in a relationship. That's the reality. I've heard men make these types of complaints before. They've talked about how their partners tie wrappers at home, how they smell funny because they don't take their shower immediately, they would rather lounge on the sofa, how their partners wear weeks to go out and then come back, take it off and look all crazy. <laughs> They've talked about, you know, the ugly clothes at home and we all laugh and make fun of it, forgetting that these are real issues that affect relationships. Ladies, take care of yourself, take care of your appearance. Don't do this because of a man, but do it for you. Learn how to enjoy the process of taking care of yourself. Learn how to take pride in your appearance. Respect yourself enough to not let yourself go simply because you have a man. When you approach it in that manner, it become something that is a part of you and not a mask that you put on every time you're single because you are trying to attract a man. Every feminine woman understands the role her appearance plays when it comes to her dating life and even her life in general. It is one of your most powerful weapons. So take care of yourself and please cultivate a feminine style because if you want to feel feminine, you must dress feminine. If you are unsure where or how to start your style journey, then I have amazing news for you because the early bird registration for the Styling Your Essence program, a program that since its launch in 2021, over 600 women from 30 countries have been a part of, is currently open at 40% off the program fees. In the program, you're going to learn how to upgrade your wardrobe, your style, your appearance, regardless of your budget, age or physical appearance. This program is for one year and the early bed registration is meant to close on the 28th of January. But I'm going to extend it till the 4th of February and that means you have about a week from when this video was published to join us. There's a telegram community with women from around the world who are also on this journey where you can send in your questions, ask for shopping tips, styling tips and they're there to give you that support. I am also there to give you that support too. I'll leave the link to the program page in the description and in the comment section. Everything you need to know about the program is on that page. I also share throwback pictures of myself so that you can see where I'm coming from. I look forward to having you in the program. And now number four, another one that we hear very often, and that is for you to learn how to be comfortable asking for help from the man. Sounds easy, right? Not really, because I still struggle with this. When I started my femininity journey and wanted to practice this more often, I found out that asking for help actually made me uncomfortable. Can you imagine that? I am sure that this is a feeling that most of us can relate to, especially if you've had to depend on yourself over and over and over, maybe due to the trauma of men letting you down. I get it. But as long as you are on this journey, the last thing you want to do is through your behavior, train a man to believe that you always have it covered always. This is absolutely terrible because you will end up with a man who will often slack off. After all, you're going to have it covered. Start asking for help. In fact, set an alarm on your phone or a reminder on your phone to ask your partner to help you with something. From the little things like opening a jar to the big things like supporting you if you're starting a business or a new career. Ask him for his input. Ask him for advice on certain areas of your life. Let him come to see very early on that you need him and that you depend on him to a healthy extent. This will even boost his ego because men love feeling needed. What really helped me overcome that uncomfortable feeling was accepting that I feel that way instead of trying to deny it or push it away. In accepting that feeling, it lost its power because I was essentially saying I acknowledge the way I feel. It is okay to feel this way, but it is not going to stop me from asking for help. You should adopt this mindset 
especially if you are the type of woman who feels that asking for help is a sign of weakness because it, it's really not i actually believe it comes from a place of strength to understand that you cannot do it by yourself and you need the help of another person and if your uncomfortable feeling comes from speaking to him one-on-one -on -one about what your need is send him a sweet voice note or a text start somewhere number five is the opposite of number four in number four i said get comfortable asking for help while number five is for you to learn how to be comfortable receiving help from him this is another tip that sounds easy but it is not so easy because i have spoken to women in this community who have told me that they still feel uncomfortable receiving help love romance thoughtfulness and chivalry and when i say chivalry i'm talking about behaviors like opening the car door for you offering to pay on dates some women feel uncomfortable about these things they even feel uncomfortable receiving money and compliments from their partners it is more common than you think that is why i am going to share something with you that will give you a mindset shift and you will never get uncomfortable receiving help from a man ever again and this is what it is so every time you reject love you reject romance you reject help thoughtfulness money or compliments from a man especially when it is being freely offered to you you are essentially saying that you do not deserve those things you are saying that that's a plate of food and what you deserve are crumbs. Oh yes, I am sure as I said that you were like, what? Probably you felt triggered and upset. Good. You should feel triggered because this speaks to the way you see yourself. The only thing stopping you is you. What I just shared with you shifted my mindset so much and really got me to a space where I am so comfortable receiving help, not just from men, but from my female friends, from my siblings, because I noticed that that feeling was not just about men. It was literally everybody. The only reason I now reject certain things being offered to me by a man is if I have weighed the pros and cons and I've come to the realization that the cons outweigh the pros in that case i would gladly say oh no thank you but i do not reject help simply because i feel uncomfortable or i feel like i am a burden or a bother to the person yes because those feelings also creep up again don't try to deny that you feel this way accept that you feel this way but don't let it stop you from receiving help from him before we get into number six are you enjoying this video learning a thing or two having a mindset shift if you are, share with me in the comment section which of the points so far is resonating with you. And don't forget to like the video, share it with somebody, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Because when you do all of these things, you are essentially, you know, telling the algorithm that this is a good video and it should show it to more women like yourself. Now, when I was writing number six, I really loved how number six made me feel. And that is for you to be playful and confident in your sexuality and sensuality. Men love playful women. Oh, they do. They love women who know how to let go and have fun and enjoy themselves without fear of being criticized. Women who are spontaneous. And that's the type of woman you want to be. You don't want to be so stuck in your way that the man suggests something. You say, no, I, I prefer this one. This is the only one that works for me. Oh, no. Be open to exploring new things. Learn how to let go, let loose and have fun. That's one part. The other part is that men also love women who are confident not just in themselves but in their sensuality and sexuality for you to get comfortable with these two things i just shared with you you need to get out of your head and into your body and for that to happen you have to stop feeling ashamed of your body you cannot begin to appreciate your sensuality or your sexuality if you are worried about your curves you're worried about your cellulites you're worried about your stretch marks all of that doesn't matter most women have these things so that should not take away from you enjoying the beauty and the wonder that is your body get comfortable with the fact that you are a woman that you feel pleasure that you have certain desires and not just that get comfortable communicating those desires it will ignite a fire between the both of you sensuality is sensory it is all about feeling okay bring your awareness back to all of that now to even help you further i have a video on how you can come to love your body i'll leave the card right here 
for you to watch after this video. Now number seven, and that is for you to let him lead. This is a tricky one and it is tricky because for you to allow a man to lead, it means that you trust his decision making skills and his judgment. And for this to happen, it means that you have chosen a man that you believe has these character traits. So for this particular point to work, the bulk of the responsibility is on you. So if you have chosen such a man, I'm hoping, then it is time for you to allow him to lead. You do not always have to be in charge of the decision making or where things should go or how things should be done. Imagine being a woman who runs a business or has a demand career where you have to be in charge of every tiny day-to-day -day decision and after dealing with all of that you then have to also be in charge of making decisions in your relationship goodness that would mean that you are operating in your masculinity 24 7 I remember watching an episode of law and order SVU and this really stood out for me so in this particular episode Olivia Benson had recently been given command of her squad so as she was dealing with all of that, her romantic partner calls her and starts to ask her what he should buy for dinner, what are they eating and all of these things. And she said, no, I've spent the entire day making decisions and this is one decision I don't think I have to make. I trust you to decide what we're having for dinner. I know it may seem small, but it has the same effect. So learn to let him take the initiative. Learn to let him be in charge of things. Let him be the problem solver. It is absolutely freeing and it pushes you back into your feminine energy. And now number eight, take care of him. This video will not be complete without this particular point. Yes, because taking care of a good man is never a bad thing. You saw what I did there, right? I said good man. Most men are so used to taking care of others that they sometimes forget to take care of themselves. And that is where you come in. And for you to do this well, you need to start paying attention. Oftentimes, a man is communicating certain things that is going on in his life that creates room for you to take care of him. If this is a man who has been wonderful to you, if you have a man who is complaining how stressful work has been, book him a spa day. He tells you how his tie is getting old or one of his shirts got ruined, get him another one. He tells you he's missing a particular dish, guess what? Cook it for him if you enjoy cooking or order it for him. And this reminds me of an incident that happened with my ex, okay? He was complaining to me how he misplaced his manicure set. And after that conversation ended, I went online and I ordered him a new one. When he received it, he was like, you bought me a manicure set? Baby, I was feeling good. <laughs> And I cannot tell you how many cash gifts and presents that small thoughtful gift gave birth to. Just pay attention. You're going to find little, little windows that you can step in and take care of him. And don't forget, give him compliments. Very few men receive compliments. That is why when you compliment a man, there are usually two reactions. Either he will say, really? Or he will feel shy and a bit self-conscious. He will smile and start blushing, literally blushing, which is always so adorable. Be generous with your compliments, okay? If he looks good, tell him, baby, you look so good. If he smells nice, tell him, baby, you smell wonderful. And don't forget to make your voice soft, alluring, and with a little heat to it. And now number nine. Number nine is for you to set your boundaries gracefully and confidently. Oh yes, this is part of the micro tips. I know that because I said micro tips, you were expecting the video to be very short, but it could not be short because I have to take the time to explain these things to you in a way that is practical and relatable. So setting your boundaries is not nagging nonstop. It is not yelling or making threats that you cannot follow through with. It is not cursing him out and dropping f-bombs left right and center the funny thing is when you do this all he will focus on is the fact that you are yelling at him which he will interpret as disrespect which in turn means nothing you say will have any effect 
it is the foundation that helps you set boundaries in a graceful and confident manner is emotional strength and emotional mastery you have to master your emotions oh yes you do so if you are a woman who tends to yell and nag during a heated moment you have to actively and intentionally remind yourself that you do not have to say anything at that moment you do not have to react remind yourself that you first need to process what has happened correctly identify the way you feel so that yelling how could you do this to me who the hell do you think you are can translate to babe what you did made me feel disrespected it made me feel like you don't value my opinion or that you don't value this relationship and i don't want to feel that way again so please don't do this again this works 10 times better than yelling or screaming especially when dealing with a sensible man because he's going to apologize and try to make it up to you but if you are dealing with a man who chooses to get defensive or tries to pick another fight even though he knows he he was wrong then you stop talking and let your action do the talking for you and this can be in any form it could be cutting ties or limiting con communication and finally number 10 which means we're coming to the end of the video i'm glad you stopped with me till now and the final micro tip is for you to maintain a life outside of your relationship if the only good thing in your life is your relationship with a man and for whatever reason that relationship starts to go bad there's a tendency for you to spiral out of control step into your masculinity try to salvage the relationship become emotionally volatile which will drive him further away start acting desperate because it is the only good thing in your life and there's nothing else to shift your attention and keep you grounded a friend of mine she's married she shared with me that when her marriage was going through a rough patch it was her career that kept her grounded it kept her focused and gave her a sense of control and also reminded her that not everything is going bad she told me it gave her an avenue to channel all that emotion until the situation in the marriage was sorted out and this is the same dynamic that should play out when you are dating so ladies nurture your career your friendships your passion your business this will give you a sense of control a sense of independence and communicates that your life is full with or without him nurturing your life outside of the relationship also creates opportunities for him to miss you it creates opportunities for him to continue pursuing you even if you are already in a relationship it means he could call you and say oh can we have an impromptu date and you say oh no darling i'm working on this thing for my business i'll see you in a couple of days it's going to miss you to pursue you more you want that it is a wonderful thing you really do not want a man to come to believe that he is the only good thing in your life in my experience when that happens that's when a man starts acting up it begins to look like you don't have any other choice than to be there there's nothing like that energy that says with you i'm fine without you i'm even better it is such an empowering place to operate from and it puts you in your divine feminine energy and ladies that's it for today's video i love to hear your thoughts which of these tips resonated with you and which one will you be putting into practice let me know in the comment section don't forget to like this video share it with somebody subscribe to the channel and also turn on post notification so that you do not miss my next video as always ladies be kind to yourself and i'll see you in the next video bye Thank you.